Hello there. My name is Angelus, and I am a very average gamer. However, not when it comes to Elden Ring. I have both the Platinum Trophy for this masterpiece, as well as over 100 hours of replay time, both exploring and learning. So as a result, I like to think I know the early game extremely well. Through today's video, I'm going to be showing you the perfect starting route and loop to take in the first couple of hours that will set you up for the rest of your playthrough. There's going to be a lot of information. Grab yourself a drink, maybe some popcorn, and possibly a pen and paper. Without further ado, this is the essential beginner's guide to start an Elden Ring. Now, as with any RPG, you're thrust into a character creator. I personally would recommend the Warrior class for your first run through. You will then be given a balanced stat list, of which we're going to be moulding into a dexterity bleed build by using the starting scimitars, as well as some additional items we're going to pick along the way. Make sure you pick the Golden Seed also as your starting gift. Once you have learned the controls and bullied your way through the tutorial, you're greeted by a gorgeous view of Limgrave. Make sure though that you ignore the big guy on the horse and run straight for the Church of Ella. Grab your Sight of Grace, upgrade materials and then head to the gate's front which is northeast from here. This is where you're going to get the magical steed torrent and the ability to level up. Before setting off, make sure you grab the map piece, the whetstone from the ruins, and this flail, which is in the back left cart. We should be using this later on. You then fast travel back to the church for a spirit calling bell, and then we are off, aiming for this general location. That is where you find the first graveyard we're going to encounter, which is a great place to pick up some early game loot, and then head towards the Church of America for a sacred tear and the wondrous physic. We then head off south, that's towards the minor Ur tree, allowing for further wondrous physic upgrades. This physic is a potion which can be customized using the various crystal tiers that we're going to find around the map. I'll be showing you a few of these key ones. You will then continue straight as we grab another map piece, as well as this site of grace that we're going to come back to later. Here, I suggest to go to these ruins to pick up both the gold fouled foot and then take on your first sub-boss. Then we head south towards the Weeping Peninsula and this side of Grace. You will then start galloping through the wall, the map piece, golden seed, and to chop the ankles off this big bloke. Fast travel back to your last grace, and then take the western route circling through the forest. Finding yourself a sacred tier upgrade. And this rope bridge. That opens up two more churches for two more sacred tiers. And in my opinion, the most important merchant in the early game, where you're able to purchase both the lantern for easy use in caves, as well as the lost ashes of war for later. Now we're heading for the home stretch, but back to this church and there's a secret gateway behind that will take you to the worst place in the game, so be careful. You'll start heading south and you'll find both a golden seed and a poisonous bridge, make sure you're quick to this grace. Here, we are taken to the round table hold, which is your hub and safe location, and make sure you give it an explore. Once you have, fast travel back to the dragon bower, and there is a spiritual jump behind you which will take you to another gravesite. Now, once you've dealt with that gravesite, you're going to want to travel straight west until you get to this fort. What you're going to need to do is make sure that you have very little runes before you go in. You're not going to be bothering fighting anybody, everything is far too overleveled. You are here for purely two reasons. To get A, a Dectus Half, that's a medallion you're going to need for later, and B, the most important early game source seal. Don't you worry, let them kill you, that is the easiest way to escape and then you can start leveling. 
So you're going to want to level up your decks to at least 18 so you're able to wield that flail that we picked up earlier. This flail does a percentage of bleed damage over time, giving you the ability to be able to tickle that dragon to death. When you're close to killing them, make sure you pop that golden foot, watch those runes pour in, and it will push you to about 96,000th worth. You're welcome. Now, this is what I would suggest to level up for a nice balanced and rough stat set ready for our next step. Now, the last thing that we're going to be doing is going back to Fort Forth, where we rested up before, grab this golden seed, and fight your way through to the top. Here, you'll get both a bleeding ash of war for our scimitars, as well as the other Dectors half. You then fast travel back to the round table hold, duplicate that ash of war, and put them both on your scimitars. That will give you a dual bleed build. Now that we have completed that starting loop, there are a few things that we're gonna to do to clean up. Now, to prevent this video from being about an hour long, I'm gonna show you what to pick up, of which all you can find on the Elden Ring wiki, which I'm going to put in the description below. Now, see on screen for the various talismans and tiers that I would suggest for you to get. So, at this point, you should be ready for the first main boss of the game. If you've been following along, possibly done some urine exploring, I would imagine you'll be in and around level 35, 40. That mixed with having a dual tower stance, bleed build, should make easy work of any of the early game bosses and will keep you comfortable as you start to progress forward. But the beauty with Elden Ring, unlike some of the other Souls games, is that it is not exclusively a dungeon crawler or linear path. You're able to go anywhere. So even if you get to that first boss and you're struggling and you're looking at that wall and you're not able to get through or you're unsure how to progress, the beauty of Elden Ring is you can turn around and go somewhere else. You can upgrade your armor, you can upgrade your weapons, you can sink more items into every part of your being, into every pocket that that new armor has to be able to get you to progress through that boss. And if that doesn't work, you can go and do it again. That is the beauty of this game. The other thing as well is this game is massive. You are going to have to explore if you don't explore, you won't get the rewards. A lot of the fun and a lot of the information that you do get from this game is just from picking a direction and seeing what's over there. It's like what the old almighty Todd Howard of Bethesda would say. You see it, you can go there. And that is the thing with Elden Ring. Regardless of what you want to do, you can explore every inch of that map. And it is worthwhile doing as well. Now, I am going to keep an eye on the comments for this video um, in case you have any questions whether that's specifically of the content that's in this video or if it's something completely different but is Elden Ring related I will try my best to answer any questions that you have or any thoughts that you have about the game I also hope that the video was helpful it's been a very fun video for me to make it was a bit of a challenging edit but I hope it is clear and concise and easy for you to follow either way that's me done I'm going to sign off as always, I appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. Take care and peace.